What's up guys, more Medic One here, and today we're working on this. Check this beauty out. It's a 1950s Sears and Roebuck gear-driven chainsaw. It's even got the model and serial number still on it. For you guys that like those, you can take and take a screenshot of that if you'd like. The main objective of today's video is we're going to get the starter fixed. As you can tell, we have no starter paws coming out to catch the flywheel. So it looks like the only thing we need is a flat bladed screwdriver to get the starter off. And we've got a little strap here, kind of a, a stiffener to keep the handle in place. We'll just take those two out right there. May not even have to do that. And we'll just take these screws out. Dude was on there, buddy. Feels like this one might have a little tension on it. Just a little bit. Yeah, we'll just be able to loosen this. Swing it out of the way. Got one more. It's kind of hard to get to. We should be able to do it. Get it out of there. <clears throat> it makes me wonder maybe if I'll be able to get it out, even though the handle the handle might be in the way. Nah, I think we're good. Yeah. So, it kind of reminds me of an old Tecumseh starter. But as you can tell, when we pull it, the whole thing is rotating. This center piece usually is held in place by a friction pack or something. As you can tell, if it's held, if you hold it, the dog will swing out. So something is not allowing this to stay stationary. This should have a little bit of friction on it. You can see the little friction pack down in here. Let's just take this thing apart and see what's going on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but wherever this, whenever you pull the rope out and it goes back in right here where this screw is this metal has just been mushroomed and it's almost hopped up over the head of that screw right there so the first thing I'm going to do is give me a little brass hammer and kind of knock that edge back down on both screws So I want to take this little gizmo apart just to give it a good once over cleaning whatnot. And I don't know how tight these screws are going to be, but we're going to try to get them out without damaging them. <clears throat> that joker was in there, buddy, unless my screwdriver slipped. 
Yeah, my screwdriver's slipping. I can't get it by hand. Hold on just a minute. Let's just go ahead and try to take this center screw out of here. I don't think we'll be able to because you have to take these two outer screws out, I believe. Let's just see what's going on down here. Well, that didn't work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to clamp this rope rotor down with a little C clamp here, or vice grip, C clamp vice grip. And I'm gonna take my screwdriver and if I can, do a little help here with this wrench. Let's see if we can't break this loose. Just has been taken off too many times and that screw is just wallered out. There we go. Did y'all hear that? It went crack. Let's see if we can do it to the same one over here. That dude was on there, boy. There we go. I love these snap-on screwdrivers. It's got this bolster right here for a 11 millimeter or a 7 16 wrench. Kind of got an idea on how to fix this, but I just want to be sure that my theory is going to be correct. So we should be able to take that out of there. And that spring right here hooks right there. Just as I suspected, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody's been in here and lubricated the crap out of this. And these things really need to be ran dry. So here's your Paul retainer, and here is the friction puck, and it just goes right here. And whenever you tighten this center screw, this kind of helps hold it all on there, but this thing is just loosey-goosey. So what we're gonna have to do is we need to take our pair of pliers and we need to tweak these little fingers. We need to bend them in just a little bit to where it'll grab onto the Paul retainer, and I bet you we'll have this thing fixed up and ready to go. First thing though, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up. Get all this grease off of here, all this grime. Make sure your spring is not, you know, messed up or anything like that. Now this one just has one Paul. As you can tell, it kinda looks like a Briggs and Stratton, but let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up and I'll check back with you in just a few minutes. So what I wanna do, now this is spring steel, so you gotta be careful. And it looks like it's been done before, but just get you a pair of duckbill pliers and just tweak those fingers in just a little bit. Don't have to be much. You don't want it bent so much you can't get it back on, is what I'm getting at. And with it being spring steel, you could just snap those fingers right off of there it's hard, hard metal. But I think we're in good shape here. And get it down in there like that. And she is tighter for sure. You don't want it so tight that it won't rotate because what's gonna happen is your recoil spring won't uh, pull your rope back in if this is too tight on there. 
if you're going to put any lube at all, you just need to put some just right there where the rope rotor meets the starter spindle, pintle, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, gel lube from Terrell Fixes All in there and put just a little bit where the starter dog is. And then we'll be able to reassemble this and it should work like a champ. Be sure you got your spring hooked up. Turn it to the right just enough to clear the holes for the screws and verify that the spring is pulling it back like it should. And then just install your screws. get those cinched down. Ah, the wind picked up a little bit. Breeze feels good. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Terra Lube Right there, and right there. And work that back and forth a little bit. Reinstall your center screw. Just give it a little tighten. Guys, I believe we got her fixed. She's coming out every time. Look right here. That dog, dog is coming out just like it's supposed to. Let's get your screw started. Remember, you'll have to put this one in first because you can't you can't get the screw in unless you put it inside the housing like this first, and then kind of cock it to one side. Then it'll it'll go in there. I don't know the history on this old saw. I don't even know if it runs, but we had to get the starter fixed before we could crank it. So here in just a few minutes, I'm gonna put a little go-go juice in it and see if it will bust off for us. If not, that'll be a another little awesome video to see if we can't get this dude running. So bear with me. Let's get these screws tightened up, put a little gas in it and see if it'll crank. Let's take a peek down in here and see what we see. Ooh, that don't look too good. Where is my flashlight? There it goes. Focus, please. Well, we see the fuel fitting down there. We see a little bit of rust, but I don't see any fuel in it at all. And it looks like somebody may have put a new fitting in there with the screen, looks like the screen has been destroyed. I think I got enough of this true fuel in here that we can see if it's gonna leak out everywhere. Gas tank may not be any good, may have holes all in it.
All right, I got it on full choke. I've got it on on. Let's just give it a pull or two and see what happens. Starter works. Let's put some helper juice right down that throat of that carburetor. Tried. Ooh. Try it again. Starter handle is killing my finger. Uh oh. Well, it did run. She got a little bit of gas leaking out of her. So, I think I'll, I'm gonna get with Terrell, fix his all, see if he's got a carburetor kit for this thing. If not, I'll have to order one on Amazon or Flea Bay, like he says. But anyway, hey. We got that starter fixed like a champ, and it didn't take a single part to fix it. If y'all enjoyed this content, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And while you're there doing that, go ahead and click that bell to get all my new videos. Y'all have a good rest of your weekend. More Medic One.